Hello, hello, amigos. Hola, hola. ¿Cómo están? Hi, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, Jill. Hi, Maple. Are we on time? Hola, hola. <laughs> Is there Anna somewhere around? <laughs> uh, Anna from Bali, is there uh, uh, here, uh, she here in our group, Maple? <laughs> Hola, Katie. Gracias, gracias. This is my kitchen. This is my special place in my house. Thank you so much for coming today, this afternoon, this sunny afternoon here in Lima. Thank you so much for your participation. And I really hope you enjoy this cooking class. I am doing this cooking class alone here in my house. This is my real life. One of my girls is studying like virtual school because we have in Peru uh, a little bit of the in-person and also part uh, virtual. Uh, my other daughter is coming anytime. So you are my guest today. And thank you for uh, coming to this Peruvian cooking show that I'm going to be conducting here in Lima for you especially. So um, if you hear like the, the noise in the street, well, it's because we are right next to the street. Let me show you just a little bit before we start. And I'm going to be very quick because today my colleague Mike is going to have a Machu Picchu tour. So you have to go to see him. So uh, I am doing this also as a way to prepare us for his wonderful tour in Peru. So I'm going to make a little bit closer the camera. I'm going to show you the ingredients, no worries. And we are going to have the chance today of cooking something very simple, which is called causa. And for that reason, for that purpose, I first will share with you, sorry if you don't see me, I'm next to the camera. I'm going to share with you the ingredients for today's uh, class. So are you ready for, for the ingredients, my friends? Okie dokie. So here we have the ingredients. I'm going to put them a little bit distant so you can make a picture. Let me know if you have a view. This is, I'm holding my computer here. Okay, so first I'm going to put this in a way that you can make a picture of it. And next I'm going to uh, tell you one by one the ingredients. The music you are hearing, by the way, my friends, is Creole music, Musica Criolla. So we need potatoes. We need about approximately half a kilogram of potato. I am going to be using a little bit more because I have a bigger family. I think this would be good for two person. You need salt, also pepper if you wish. You need tuna can, mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup. The last one is optional. Tablespoon of olives, peas, carrots, egg, red onion. You need yellow pepper, ají amarillo paste. You need oil, avocado, and a couple of key limes, okay? So now I'm going to start with this. And let's now turn the camera to me. So I am a busy mom. Today I have to cook for my little ones that are very picky usually. I'm just checking on my ingredients. They are basically done here. So first of all, something you will need for this causa, which is one of the most traditional dishes we have in Peru, the one we love very much, is potatoes. I have boiled already my potatoes, and this is the variety we call yellow potato, right? So we're going to take some of them here, and we're going to mash them. We're going to make a puree of these potatoes. So uh, as I was saying, this is a very old recipe. You can find this recipe everywhere in Peru, from the Andes to the coast. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a little bit lower the camera so maybe you will see a little bit better what I'm doing. Are, are, you, are you okay with this angle, my friends? Is it okay? Let me know if you, you are... A, yes, Jill, thank you, thank you. So first of all, we need to take off the uh, skin of the potato. This is the yellow potato. Are you noticing the color? 
the causa uh, when it is presented, I, I named this class the uh, uh, potato cake. Well, it looks like a cake, although it is a cold dish, salty cold dish, right? Um, so the causa has mainly ingredients that are from a uh, native from Peru, but also there are some ingredients that are uh, introduced that were introduced by the conquistadors. Mm? Uh, so we're going to see basically a mixed fusion dish uh, that has a little bit of the Peruvian native uh, products and the ones introduced by the Spaniards. By the way, my friends, are you boil you boil them whole? Yes, yes, my dear NC. I I previously washed them very well. Uh, uh, you can see here very well washed, and then after, well, I peel them. You know, some people like to do them already peeled, and it's actually faster to do them peeled and chopped in in pieces. Oh, uh, you take less time. But I did it the way you know that lazy way. I did it just washing them and putting them in the in the pot so in a moment what we're going to do is smash them but uh, this recipe uh, which is very simple uh, is also one of the most beloved of peruvians because it's a lifesaver children love this uh, dish because at the end you're going to see that we can decorate this with different forms it's really funny and um, so do you know what causa means have you have you heard this word before in in spanish causa see hi Bugita. hello hello thanks for coming i hope you miss me guys i was missing you a lot uh, my 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 guys that used to be the ones cooking here for me, they are now working. I am a mom, an in-home mom. <laughs> so, well, now I am now doing the cooking classes myself. So, first of all, we're going to smash. Um, the yellow potato we are using is one of the 3,000 varieties of potatoes we have in Peru. So, Mabel, my Spanish is not existent. <laughs> I understand that, Mabel. I know, I know. Causa is not an easy word, maybe, but uh, in English, it sounds a little bit similar. Cause. Cause, right? So, uh, the, the name of this dish is cause. So, the let, let me tell you the reason of the name so during the time of the uh, independence period uh, we were having you know, our brave soldiers who were fighting for the independence against the, the Spaniards actually were Peruvians fighting against Peruvians there were people that were uh, you know against the, the Spaniards there were people that were pro the Spaniards right so I think it's almost done this so uh, the wives of the soldiers, which were also supporting their husbands, uh, they used to go with them to the campaign, right? So uh, let me go back to this story in a moment. So we have now the puree, right? So what else do we need? I mean, I'm, I'm making this like my grandma would make it, like, you know, taking the things that are around, right? So. First of all, let me tell you that we have to add salt. Of course, the potato has, it's a little bit salty, naturally, but we have to add a little bit of salt, okay? So, we're going to add a spoon, half a spoon of salt, okay? So this is real kitchen, real Peruvian kitchen. So we're going to add a little bit of salt. We are going to add also oil. Where is my oil? We have oil. This is cooking oil. Some people like to use olive oil. It really depends on you because olive oil has its own flavor. And um, if, if you want to do it more like traditional way, how we will find this dish in the restaurants, 
it will not have the taste of olive oil. So it will have a more neutral. Uh, so let's say, using the same spoon, approximately one spoon of regular vegetable oil. We're going to use also another thing, very important, this. Do you know what's this? So you didn't salt the, no, no, Punquita, I didn't salt the water because I prefer that the salt, the amount of salt I want will be here in the, in the final puree, right? Do you know what is this, my friends? This is chili, right? We will be using chili. Uh, this is the yellow chili. It looks orangey, but uh, we will not be using it like this. We're going to use it as a paste. We boil this chili uh, for um, several minutes. And we have to take previously the, um, the veins, the seeds, then later, when it's boiled, this, the skin peels like a plastic. It's very easy to peel it. You blend it, and this is what comes out. But internationally, you can find this already, you know, in packages, right? This is aji amarillo, yellow chili. So it's the same, right? This has just added preservatives, and this one here, you know, is the natural one that I made earlier. How much of this will we will need? Give me a second. We will need more or less one spoon. One spoon. Okay? Okay, maybe a little bit more. Half more, okay? Mmm, smells woof, powerful. Okay, and it's going to come the part, the fun part, okay? So we're going once again to wash our hands. We're going to, we will not need this anymore. And we are going to use our hands, okay? Do you blend uh, this oil with water? Yes, yes, it, what, how do you mean? Um, maple it has well the paste uh, already of course has a little bit of uh, oil in it but it doesn't have water right and we have the salt and we have the uh, potato right and the oil see okay we're going to mix with our hands oh sorry i forgot to take off my ring okay we're going to mix this very well okay uh-huh. Yes, it's blend with a little bit of oiled maple. The uh the chili. But it is boiled in water. It of course absorbs a little bit of the uh, water, right? We're going to add this. And there's one ingredient we're missing here that I'm going to be adding at the end. A couple actually. Uh, there are two. One one secret one. And another one that is important for the flat final flavor, right? A little bit of this, this, this. A little ice that came inside. Look at this. We're making it's very nice, very nice, very smooth. Huh? There's one more thing we have to add here that gives very important flavor: the lemons. Well, this is called key lime, right? Key lime. Have you seen before this one here? No garlic maple? Uh, this one here. We're going to add approximately, um, I would say half of the key lime. It's a big key lime, right? So, we're going to cut this one here, take off the seat. So, you know, sometimes we have a key lime that is not so big, so we need one. Our key limes are very juicy, 
very juicy. Look at this. Huh? And there's one more thing. This is alternative. This is my little secret. My grandma also used to do this too. Where is my, sorry for my back. Oh, ah, over here. Chop, chop. This is mustard, mostaza, mustard. So this is completely optional. Some people like it like this. Some people don't like it like this. If you prefer to skip this one, it's all right. It makes it a little bit more yellowish, okay? Just a little bit, half a spoon more or less, okay? So we are finishing with this part. Once again, mix, mix, mix. And we're going to integrate everything. So as you know, this dish is very versatile. We can make it only vegetarian if we wish. My choice today is to make it of tuna. We're going to have a tuna causa. See, fish causa. Chicken is more popular, shredded chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going just to reserve. It is already integrated. You can see. Oh, can't see anything. Oh, sorry, uh, car repair place. Oh, uh, can you can you see can you see me? Uh, Emil, are you talking about me? Let me just move the camera. Maybe you're not seeing properly. Is it okay? So let's now continue, my friends. So what else we need? We're going to move this on one side. We don't need this anymore. For now. And what else we have? We have vegetables, okay? These vegetables you're going to be using for this dish uh, are a variety, uh, not so big, but used a lot here in in this in the city for salads for everything already well also some eggs here which i'm going to be putting next these are coming in a moment we're going to use it use carrots and peas carrots and peas let me put this here Okay, carrots and peas. I just finished boiling them. Okay, my friends, at the beginning, I share the list of ingredients, but I'm going to be also sharing them again. Uh, I said that approximately half a kilogram, uh, punkita. I think spunkita or NC uh, of potatoes. So, but no worries, at the end I'm going to be sharing again the recipe. I have a family of five, so uh, I am doing a lot. In that way, everybody will be satisfied with the uh, cows I'm going to do. So, next, we need this. Tuna. How many of you like tuna? Please let me know if you like tuna or maybe you prefer chicken. Let me know if chicken is your favorite. Uh, or maybe we have vegetarians in the group. If we have vegetarians in the group, that would be also great because I'll tell you what to do. Mm? So where the amount of peas and carrot, what's the amount of peas? Um, I would say peas, approximately 100 grains. And carrots, I would say about one carrot for the amount I recommended for two person. I am doing a little bit more here because I have a bigger family. Uh, 
but if you are cooking for two, that amount will be okay. So, we have here the tuna, okay? So, for this part, we will need mayo. Tuna with the oil from the can. No, actually, I took it out. I took it out. There's a little bit here coming still. Yeah. Now is everything is out. This is the tuna. We took out the oil uh, in the can, but now we're going to be adding this mayo. Okay. Look at this. Have the mayo. Oh. Ah, it's new. Uh, you can make your mayo at home. But I'm sure most of you will prefer to buy mayo already made. So, how much of mayo? We'll see uh, how much of tablespoons to give you an idea because everything is, to me, is like I measure it. We have one tablespoon. I will say two tablespoons of this for now. We're going to mix. There is one thing I have to also add this uh, here that is very important. So maybe according to that, we'll see if we need another spoon of uh, mayo. Okay, look at this. Oh, look at, can you hear the music, my friends? This music is Musica Criolla. This is the music we love at the time we are going to have lunch. I don't know why we, we consider this music to be an appetite opener. <laughs> so, okay, we are mixing this, but I have something already here. Cut. This is onion. <laughs> Gracias, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is onion. Uh, traditionally, we use red onion. Uh, my family doesn't like too much the taste of the red onion, uh, so I use today white, right? Uh, they're a little bit picky with the um, flavor of the uh, So if you don't have a processor, you have to get one, my friends. This is not a sponsor cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I recommend you to get one, especially with the onion, if you don't like uh, Okay, so we're going to chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Easy, easy. Okay. One more. Muy bien. Muy bien, amigos. The kitchen is starting to get a little bit messy, but that's how things are, right? In the kitchen. A clean kitchen, perfect clean kitchen. Uh, it's just the one the Kardashians use, but not the one we real people use. Okay, so now we have everything going to pick this, this one here. So we have here Arequipa and the onions. Yes, that's right, Elizabeth. Arequipa is the land of the onions. It's the volcanic, uh, let's say, terrain, the ash in the soil makes onions lovely. So I would say that for this amount, approximately half of the onion will be enough. It depends always on how much you love onions, of course. No, it's not... It's not uh, mandatory, you know. And the onions, if you don't like onions, it's all right. You can skip that part, okay? Kitchen is always creativity. We are going to add one more now. And there's going to be one more also added because, oh, now we have this. We have the, what's this, here, vegetables. 
Mm, I will add a little bit more of peace. You know something? We have here in Peru a big problem, a big, a big uh, protest of agricultures in the Andes. And there are not so many fresh groceries coming to Lima. We have a problem in the economy of Peru now. So I didn't found too many peas. So, well, that's why I am not putting too many, but you should put about a hundred grains. That would be all right. Uh, and one, uh, one carrot, okay? Now we're going to mix this. So, what do you think? We add a little bit more of mayo. I think yes, right? We have to be playful here. Let's add a little bit of mayo. Ooh. Okay, so in total we added, for this specific recipe, four uh, teaspoons. It was four teaspoons of mayo. Okay, add a little bit of pepper, okay, hello, hello for, to the people that are joining to this show, and now we're going to get playful. Um, well, something very important, my friends, is that the... At the moment, we're going to be putting the ingredients. Um, we can use a mold like this, you know, because we're going to put in layers. But today, I wanted to go a little bit fancier, and we're going to use this. Do you know what is this? This is a mold. <laughs> so we're going to use this mold like this. And we're going to put the causa in layers. So causa was a dish made by the Rabonas or the wives of the soldiers to feed their soldiers during the time of the independence. They used to go from town to town asking, you know, the, the leftovers that the people had, like vegetables, uh, anything. And they started to, to cook this and they cooked the potato also, and they started to put this on layers, and they served this with love to the soldiers. And also the little bits they made extra, they sold in the markets, and they called this dish the dish for the cause of the independence that eventually became just cause, causa, right? So this is why the dish is called like this. We are going to uh, continue. Oh, sorry, I have something in the screen. Okay, so we have here uh, the mold, and we're going to use the following oil. We need oil for uh, not sticking. Let's say a little bit of this here. The mold. Yeah, not, not making like difficult to take off the mold uh, at a time we finish filling everything, right? So, we're going to do this now. Where is my other spoon? I need another spoon. We're going to take now uh, first layer. We're going to make a layer. Let's move this here, right? We're going to create one layer, okay? Can you see well, my friends? <laughs> How thick? The third, maybe, the third part of the mold? Hmm? Could it be? More or less, right? I'm going to show you in a moment better the, the how the layers are resulting. Okay, this dish is really easy. It can be classified as a entree if, if you wish, but I know many people that have this as a main and they even put this and rice next <laughs> because we Peruvians love the rice. We love rice and love potatoes. Okay, 
So, we have this. Now, we are going to put this other part. Oh, oh by the way, I forgot to show you. Okay, so can you see how much of potato? Ah, so it's more or less third of the mold. Same process in the casserole dish, but thinner layers. Oh, interesting. Indeed. So we have here the second layer. The ways of making this uh, dish, like the, the presentations, are different. I've seen people that sometimes, for example, put the potato in the hand. They put inside this mix and they cover and then make like a little bowl. That is also okay. It's really your uh, creativity, creativity, okay? I'm trying to finish this the fastest I can because my friend Mike is about to start his tour. I'm so happy that Mike is back uh, in our platform. He's been taking a little license. So, what else we have here? We have to put avocado, avocado. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, avocado, always delicious. Hi, Bertie. Welcome to my home in Lima. I am using the old app, by the way. <laughs> I had some issues last Saturday with the new app. So I'm using the O app. I hope you are still there, my friends. I don't see if if I have you, uh, like with the new app, we can see people coming in and now how many are. I really hope you are having a fun time with me now and learning from the real, real kitchen. This is the Peruvian cooking show where sometimes things will be a little bit messy, but will be functional. Okay, so now we're going to cut layers of, oh, look at this, avocado. Who doesn't like avocado? Hi, Katie. <laughs> well, I, I hope you, you like this, this cooking class. This cooking show is, um, well, very uh, realistic, no? Cook, uh, cooking sometimes. We see it in the in the shows, in the internet, or in the TV. Oh, that sophisticated. Sometimes we think, oh, that dish must be very complicated. Better I don't do it. I got very inspired with my colleague Anna from Bali. She was doing. She's doing wonderful cooking classes from her home. Very real, and I like her style. So I said, okay, why not? Let Let's do it the way. We all do it, right? So look at how we are doing. We are putting the avocados. I added half an avocado, but if you are real avocado lovers, you can have more. It also depends also on how much you are making, right? Okay. What else? Really, Maple, she did an eight hour length tour. Oh my God, it's incredible. She's incredible. Who has this many like batteries? <laughs> so now for the last part, I want to ask you something. Please help me choose. Would you like a smiley face or a Machu Picchu? What do you want? Tell me please comment here. Smiley face or Machu Picchu? In honor of my the tours my colleague Mike is doing. Machu Picchu, my boy saying, anyone else wants to comment, wants to choose Machu Picchu or a smiley face? Elizabeth, a smiley face. We have a tie. We need, we need more boats. We need, I need at least one more boat. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Arlene. Machu Picchu or a smiley face. We need one more boat. One more boat. So for finishing this. Uh, delicious recipe. Okay. We're going to open also the egg because we need an egg also. Machu Picchu or a smiley face. So what do we have? 
a uh, Pokemon Machu Picchu. <laughs> so, are we with Machu Picchu or or a smiley face? Huh? So I think is it okay a smiley face? See, I think we agreed with a smiley face. I don't know. Okay, let me now do the following. We're going to cover this with a smiley face, okay? Muy bien. So, I am doing this for the last layer. You know, you don't want to press too much or everything. Because you can, you know, uh, damage a little bit of the shape of the avocado, right? So... You want to keep it still good inside. We're going to add more and more. I love Creole music. It reminds me a lot my grandmother. She cook amazing. So, are we still with the smiley face, right? So let's do the smiley face. <laughs> yes, I am sculpting. This is my other passion was like all plastic arts. So I think you can imagine that I like art in general so we're going to use for the decoration the eggs but i'm doing a, a funny face so that's why we're going to use of course the egg in a creative way to make the eyes what do you think about that we're going to use also ketchup for this part is the decoration part is let's say up to you in the restaurants you will find all kinds of fancy decorations we're going to do a smiley face can you see the smiley face Eh, eh, eh. Very well. So, are you ready for taking off the mold? <laughs> oh, let me clean the, the dish. We have to clean it. Okay, one. Two and three. Oh, missing nose. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. Uh, what we use? Do we use? Do we use this one here, maybe, for a nose? Hey. Okay. Now we have nose. Good. One, two, and three. Oh. <laughs> we have this here and we have something more we can even put as a nose an olive because I also added the olive in the recipe look at this Ta -da! we have a causa a traditional causa that is perfect for your kids Perfect for all the family, is healthy, it is really, really delicious. So you can have it in summertime, now that the summer is coming, spring is, I think, a perfect dish for that season. Thank you so much for your participation. Let me I'll put this um, uh, plate in a more like nicer location. Just give me a second for a final picture. Okay, so, and we are going to go in the different direction of the house. Gracias, Mabel. Thank you for your tip support, my friends. You know that they help 
ask Allah to continue doing these events, to continue cooking for you, uh, doing any any fun things for you all. Thank you so much for coming. Also, I'm going to be doing more of these cooking shows. If you wish me to cook something in particular, let me know. Every time you see this uh, tour activated, that means I'm going to be cooking something different. Usually I'm going to start with more simple recipes, maybe salads, things that can be easy for you to cook at home or you can find more options. Thank you, Jill. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if there was any mistakes or any. This was my first time doing this uh, cooking show alone, uh, but I'm going to keep doing them. If you wish to follow my uh, social media, uh, you can uh, click the button follow. If this is the first time you are with me in the upper part, you'll find a button uh, named follow. Uh, if you already follow me, you will not find that button. In my profile, you're going to find uh, all my uh, contacts, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I have a Facebook group, by the way, called Adventures in Lima with Vanessa. If you wish to follow my upcoming adventures in Lima, I'm going to be doing lectures. I'm going to be doing uh, historic uh, tours. I am a professional licensed tour guide, by the way, not a cook. <laughs> Gracias, Arlene. Thank you. So uh, I am just a mom that loves Peruvian food food no? and, and I want to share this food with you all. So I'm going to move the camera over here. Let me turn the, the uh, over there. So um, thank you so much. I hope you can follow me on my uh, gracias, Katie. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I have passion for, for, for teaching anything about Peru and our culture. So please follow me on my Facebook group, Adventures in Lima with Vanessa. All my social medias are in my description in, in my Hego channel. Uh, if you don't know how to get to my channel, just put in the Google in the search uh, tool. Vanessa with B and double S and you'll go directly to my channel. See you soon. Now I'm going to be jumping on the tour of my colleague Mike. He's back after so long. So please go there and give him a, a, all the love you, you can. Uh, he is, is back with lots of wonderful stories to share about Peru. Katie, muchas gracias. That's my uh, link to my channel. And Lots of love from your friend and guide in Lima. Hope to see you in a couple of days for a historic talk from my home. Take care. Best to you all. Muchas gracias. And bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, babies. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.